been a couple months since I shot a three-part series on how to set up a battery state of charge solution for wireless networks um, using uh, Gentech VAT 1300. Um, and what I had in those initial uh, videos, all I had really done is create a simple uh, uh, data logger, not really doing anything with the data. Um, since then, I, I came upon uh, Colin Hickey's um, solution for displaying data using uh, Grafana and an influx uh, database to uh, graphically display the data on a um, on an EP ever uh, solar controller. So I kind of took that as a lead and uh, integrated in uh, my solution for the uh, the battery monitor, the Gentech battery monitor. So this is essentially the code that I had done before. Um, the only addition is I, ch I moved this over to an ESP8266. But you can see up in the right-hand corner there, it's logging all the same data as before. Um, the only thing I added is is the battery state of charge calculation because um, that doesn't come directly um, directly out of the controller. So um, just setting up a remote, we're logging into a Raspberry Pi. That's where I'm setting stuff up as. And this is a f after a fresh install of Raspbian um, Buster. I'm doing a sudo update and a sudo app full upgrade, um, which is recommended on a, on a fresh install. So um, after those things, two things are done. Basically, updating the repositories um, to grab the the uh, latest version of the Influx database. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, and um, this, uh, this installation is um, sped up a bit, um, just to hurry through this, and I'm, I'm doing a voiceover. So uh, the sudo app update will commit the, uh, um, the changes and then uh, install Influx database. And um, this should install the latest... Uh, stable version, um, which I think is 1.7.10, I believe. Um, and then uh, after this installs, I'll go into the uh, command line utility for the Influx database and uh, set up the database. There is a graphical user interface for uh, the Influx database, but um, there's it's really such few things you really need to do to set things up. The command line interface is, is actually simpler solution to do that. So basically uh, set things up so Influx will come up on boot. Uh, entered there, created the uh, uh, database, uh, or it created a user uh, root with password root. Um, you could set that up for anything you want. And then I created a database called BAT SOC for state of charge. Exit out of that. And uh, now I'm installing something uh, called the Node Red, um, and this is sped up uh, greatly to speed through this. Um, this is using a, a script to install it over the network. Um, it's my understanding you should always use uh, caution when you when you're using this method that you're installing from a known source. You examine uh, the script to make sure there's nothing malicious going on, but um, so, and then uh, do a do a node uh, st start the service. Um, once you start it, you have to control C out of it at this point. And then uh, now that this is uh, set up, there'll be a um, and then again set it up so that the service uh, starts at boot up. And then I'll go in and there's a web interface for uh, Node Red or um, yeah, I'm sorry, Node Red which is uh, the uh, address of your Raspberry Pi, the IP address at uh, port uh, 1880. So um, the data is coming across from the uh, ESP8266 as TSP packets on, on port. Um, so the, in my case, the, uh, I'm at 192.186.1.32, so that's the IP address of the uh, ESP8266 D1 Mini, um, and then port 23 is what is coded into the code. Um, and um, actually, and then put a, a debug status there and look at the output. 
So the output out of this is coming across as a, uh, a buffer of, of characters. You can actually set up that uh, TSP node to output a string. Um, I didn't initially catch that, so I actually put a function in here which converts it from a buffer into a string. But you can see every once a minute the data is coming across, and that's basically the the uh, the uh, decimal values for what's in that um, buffer. And here I'm setting up the function, so this step's not really necessary. You can go back into that TSP, and rather than outputting buffer, you can output string and eliminate um, this node here, this function node here. Um, but anyway, it's quite quite easy to set things up. Every time <coughs> you do make changes. You have to go up to that upper right hand corner and click deploy which will which will uh, redeploy the new setup so <clears throat> here I'm adding another uh, debug message and uh, I'll deploy that so you can see uh, the, uh, should see both the uh, the buffer data in decimal and the uh, ASCII string come out the uh, in the next next when the next minute comes around Again, this is sped up, um, I think, like 2x, so yeah, once every 30 seconds or so, we'll see it update. So here I'm setting up the uh, HTTP um, setup, and basically it points to my uh, uh, the database and uh, username and password there for the credentials. And then now you can see that the, um, the string information came across with all of our data. And then again, setting up a, 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 a debug message uh, output, so you can basically see the result of that HTTP request to make sure it's successful. And again, deploy uh, on that upper right-hand corner. So you should see that come up, and then down in the right-hand corner, there's a message payload string down there with actually no messages that came back, basically indicating that um, that there was. Um, no issues with issuing the data into influx. So I'll come back here in here, and this step's really not necessary, but this is basically to verify that things have gone well. So I'll go back into the influx uh, command line interface and uh, use bad SOCs, the database. I can show measurements. So as actually, there's only one measurement, uh, SOC. But within that measurement, SOC, SOC, is all the field keys. So those are all our field keys. And right now, they're all coming across this float. You can go in and and uh, modify that so that they are um, you know integers or whatever you need, but um, floats float works. Um, so now that that's set up, um, I'm um, installing the latest version of Grafana. Went through a couple different methods. The the method here basically is grabbing the latest stable version. So I download that directly with a with a wget. And then uh, do a sudo uh, and uh, dpkg to install it, the the local copy, and then uh, set all the services up correctly. So once again, they come up at uh, boot time. So now that we have uh, uh, going, th still setting things up, so it comes up at boot time, and then I'll um, look at the uh, st the. Status to make sure it's up and running in a minute here. So you can see the the, the service is active and running. Control C out of that, and then uh, come up here and go to the uh, Raspberry Pi um, at uh, port 3000. Log in as admin and passwords admin, and this will prompt you to change the password, which I'm doing here. And then uh, once that's done, uh, basically walks you through. You need to add a data source. So that's basically setting up on the data source as the Influx database. And um, that's what we're doing here. So it's basically pointing to the uh, local host, uh, port 8086 is the, uh, the interface for accessing the Influx database. And um, the um, 
and then down further down here, the influx uh, database details, basically uh, the name of the database, uh, bat soc, and once again, user root, uh, password root. And then once you've done that, come set that up. So we're doing a, uh, we're getting data out of here. And then down here at the bottom, you can do a save and test. And it should come up with this green um, success with the check mark there showing it was successful. So step back, come in, and now um, set up the uh, dashboard. So here I'm setting up a um, just an example, a, a graph dashboard, and I'm going to just display the uh, temperature, battery temperature. It's important to note I just have this on a bench setup now, so none of this is actually real data. I just have things hooked up to a power supply, so there's not a lot going on. Um, the uh, the temperature is real data, just me measuring the ambient temperature of the room here. Um, but um, and then I set things up to rather than pick a mean, I think that was I picked the last data point, um, and then. Um, and I'll put all these steps down below in the uh, the notes. Um, basically, um, what you need to do to follow uh, labeling the graph, so it's battery temperature, and then as you can see, you can hover the mouse over over the uh, graph and see what's going, and read back the real the data. Um, so right now it's displaying the last six hours worth. Um, you can change, go up at the upper right hand corner. You can display the last five minutes. Uh, you know, 15 minutes. Uh, last hour, last two hours, six hours, last day, uh, all kinds of things. Last week, last month, last year, um, all that sort of thing. Here in setting up a graph, I'm going to set up a graph for the uh, battery voltage. Um, and that you can set up quite nice. Um, so you have um, different colors to indicate when things are um, over voltage or under voltage or whatever you want. Um, you can even set up, which I haven't done, you can even set up warnings so you get some sort of um, like email warnings and things like that when things um, um, go astray. So that's what I'm in the process of setting up here is um, setting up the min and the max, um, getting it to display uh, decimal points. <coughs> so you look at the battery voltage and then I still have to come over and adjust the colors for the different zones. Um, so basically saying anything from 12 to 14.8 is good and anything below that or above that is not good. Um, and that the whole display will change that 12.2 will go to red if it if it gets outside that 12.2. And um, over there on the left um, I don't it comes up by default mean, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. It's like the mean of the, all the data in your database. I really want to look at just the last value uh, logged. So that's what I'm doing here is setting setting that up. So, And I'm a little confused about what last not null is versus last, but it seems to require last not null. And I'll title that um, battery voltage. So... And then um, when you're done here, you need to, uh, we'll come back to the main screen. You can move things around, resize them. It's, it's quite intuitive, quite powerful. Um, make sure you save, save that. Um, so you move things around, resize them. There's a little disk up there, like a floppy disk. You need to click to save this. So it's, it's there um, upon reboot. Um, and um, actually what I did with the EP Ever Solar Controller, that's in a separate database, so I'll go to that in a minute. So right now I'm just changing, looking at the last five minutes, looking at the last 15 minutes. So I don't have a lot of data in here since we just sent that up, just set it up fresh here, so only a few minutes of data. Um, but um, we'll go over and I'll show you my, on a different Raspberry Pi, um, where I've set it up with both the uh, Gentech um, battery monitor and the EP ever so it's basically pulling data out of two, two, two databases and displaying that all on the same uh, dashboard so it's just coming up now so uh, I put the code up on uh, github 
I'll put a pointer down below. Um, I've updated the code um, from from the previous release. Last one I said was just a, a text logger. This new one is is a, a Wi-Fi TCP uh, logger. Um, but basically, you see um, the gauges. That that temperature there on the right is uh, one degree of resolution coming out of the um, the Gentech controller. The EP ever has uh, like super fine. Uh, um, resolution, but you can basically see the two are tracking to each other. That's basically my my condo uh, last 24 hours. You can see when the uh, uh, thermostat shut the turned out turned down the heat at night and watched it drop, and in the morning it uh, turned back on and warmed warmed things back up. So, and then um, I just kind of have a phony one amp charge going on on my uh, battery, so you can see that linear slope. As it's uh, as it's um, charging charging up um, a fictitious battery. I don't really have a battery in there. I just have a one amp going through the shunt. So that's basically it. Um, hope you enjoyed this and um, and uh, if uh, you have any questions, um, put them in the comments below. Thank you very much. Bye bye.